So how did my story start, right? I want to tell you my story. Which is like the typical story. It's like, man, I bet you've heard it like a million times, all right? It's, uh, well, a year and a half ago, almost a year and a half ago, I was happy and I didn't know it, all right? I was like full blast training at the gym, you know, like lifting heavy, uh, training jujitsu, training judo, going all out. Man, I was going so much all out and I felt the top of the world that I overdid it at the gym. I, I was always like lifting more and more and I wouldn't rest. Like I would lift every day, hit legs, hit arms, but mainly like arms a lot. I don't know legs too, but, but mainly like my arms, I was like really going for it and I was doing cables. Like lifting the cables hard, and um, I didn't notice when it happened, but it happened because uh, one day it was in December. I remember in December, man, I got a couple of those uh, Bang, uh, uh, those energy drinks, Bang. Man, this, man, it's messing me up here. All right, those Bang energy energy drinks. Okay, I can't see my food. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, maybe there. I was doing the bang energy drinks, right? I took two one day. Two, and I had been drinking like Coke Zeros, two, that day. And suddenly, like I went to lift, all normal, and I was in my car, and uh, suddenly, I felt like, man, I got pressure on my chest. I can't, like, miss me. There you go. I got pressure, pressure on like, my chest. God, man. And I say, what's going on, right? I feel like pressure, and then like I'm burning, like I was burning, like burning like, over here. And I say, what's going on? And I say, my arms started like, tingling. And I, I go, oh my God, man, like heart attack, right? Heart attack, heart attack. What am I gonna do? And I didn't know what to do. So I was in my car, I said, I'm gonna have a freaking heart attack driving. And I, I, I said, how can I have a heart attack? I'm in good shape. Like, how am I gonna have a heart attack? But anyway, so I went to a, uh, here now, this uh, clinic, and they got, as soon as I told them I had shortness of breath, because I couldn't breathe, shortness of breath, and my heart hurt, all right, they like got me right in, I mean, I, I passed by the line, they didn't care, right? so, see that dog behind me, hey, Lala, Lala's behind me, anyway, so, they just let me through, they did a uh, electro, uh, electrocardiogram, that, that thing, right, and they told me that the results were abnormal, Freaking abnormal. I said, what the heck, man? And they told me, man, go to a hospital right now. But I was in shock. I was in freaking shock. So they told me, we can get you an ambulance. I was like, man, I'm not gonna pay, welcome to the United States. I'm gonna pay $5,000 just to go in a little happy truck with a freaking siren, right? So no, 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 I'm taking my own car, I'm driving. But like, be careful driving, it's like, you could have a heart attack any second, any second, that's what they told me, right? Any second. So anyway, I drive myself to the hospital thinking, man, this is awful. I, I thought I was gonna die. All right, so I get there, the same deal, they let me right through. And they take a, they, they take a, a blood test. They do an they, they electrocardiogram, I think. And they, they take a blood test, right? And my uh, troponin levels, you know, that enzyme that your heart releases when it's under stress, my troponin levels are really high. They're like about 300 or something like that. And that's like pretty elevated. Uh, of course, they told me that a guy next, like two doors down, had like a thousand something of troponin, so I wasn't that, that bad, right? But still, my troponin was up, so my heart was doing something. And I was, I was, I was still, like not happy, right? So the electro, uh, the, the, the cardiogram thing also said that it was kind of weird, but they were not very uh, concerned about it. Uh, anyway, first uh, story they gave me a, 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 a well, it's Valium, a benzodiazepine to calm me down, which calmed me down, all right? So I was laying there on the stuff waiting for the doctor to come in, and then this freaking nurse comes in, right? This nurse comes in and tells me, you had a heart attack, you had a freaking heart attack. And I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, you had a heart attack. And she was like, sorry about the heavy set lady, but she was heavy set, right? So she started talking to me about diet, I'm like, dude, how about you? Uh, you follow, right? You, you, you practice what you preach, lady. All right, come on. But she was like, you had a heart attack. Really, uh, really, uh, I say, uh, what's the word? Uh, 
They are very responsible on her part, right? And she has no freaking proof or anything yet. So anyway, then comes the doctor, talks to me. She says they're gonna put a, a camera out my vein. I'm laying there going, oh my God, man, I didn't want to see another sunset, you know? I was like, I just want to go play with my dogs. I just want my life back. Uh, and I didn't know it was the beginning of a whole freaking nightmare, but in other ways. So I'm not gonna get ahead. So the next, uh, the next day, the cardiologist was coming in, so I spent the night in the hospital. Okay, and I was feeling better, right? I was feeling better, but still worried. So the next day, the cardiologist comes in. They prep me up, they take me, and uh, they put the camera out my vein. Before this, they, they did an ultrasound on my heart, which looked good. Every, all the you know the the walls were not not in problem. Uh, the heart was a good size, normal size. Everything was normal. So the next. They said they took me to, uh, to the camera thing. They put me under, they put the camera up my vein. Um, and then they told me that it looked good. I said, what the heck, man? So they gave me uh, a referral for the cardiologist and get out. So um, I got out of the hospital. So then, well, it's like a couple weeks later, I went to the cardiologist. And he told me that my heart was perfect. Everything was perfect. The troponin thing, I don't know. You know, you know, well, it was a little bit elevated, but, but it had gone down, so I was not a problem, so there was no heart problem. And, uh, but he told me what you have is GERD. It's a heartburn. And I go, oh, really, GERD? What the heck is that, right? A heartburn? I mean, I think a couple of tons and it's over. He's like, no, I think it's uh, I think it's Bill, Pantoprazole. Uh, Pantoprazole, or whatever. He gave me 40 milligrams. So it was like twice a day, 40 milligrams. 20, 20 twice a day. So I was like, all right, great. And he's like, uh, yeah, it should it should uh, resolve itself in two weeks. I was like, what the heck, man? It resolve itself? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That was the beginning. The beginning of the night, man. Of the hell ride, all right? And I bet many of you are in this hell ride right now. And I'm telling you, you're not alone. The worst part is thinking that you're alone. Okay? You're not alone. There's others like you, just like me, out there with this garbage. Right? So you're not alone. Remember that. Man, when you're at your worst point, you can start getting weird thoughts. You know, I thought you're not doing anything, but you get weird thoughts. Anyhow, so I did get into Pencil for Zone, and I felt worse, man. Worse. So I took it for a couple of weeks, and I was, man, now the, the, the acid was going insane. I was burning, burning, burning all, all the time. So um, I talked to the doctor again and said, this freaking thing won't work. And he's like, no, I'm going to give you a, a referral to a gastroenterologist. All right. So you know how things work in the States when you need re referrals and sometimes they miss the referrals. So yeah, my, my dog was an idiot. So he sent a referral where he, he really didn't send it. I missed. So it took me like freaking three months to see the gastroenterologist. Between calling and getting my referrals, not not like completed. A mess, all right? All right. I burn this stuff with can't stand when it's like wet meat. I hate it, like when it tastes like wet meat. So I like burn it all the way and forget about it. So anyway, so I go to the gastroenterologist, like three months later, I get to see him. The guy comes in, he doesn't look like very impressed by my situation. You know, he's like, no, keep doing the, the PPI, right? The, the pantoprazole, the proton pump inhibitor. And I'm telling you, it's not freaking working, man. It sucks. No, no, I keep doing it. So, a couple weeks later, I couldn't take it anymore, man. I was burning again. I felt like I had a heart attack. Well, I didn't have a heart attack, but I was feeling it again. So I went to the freaking uh, emergency room again. They bounced me out, all right? They said, they did a blood test. My troponin level was lower than the last time that I went in, and he told me, No, it's your heartburn. Uh, go see your doctor and turn like this. Man, I was like, Let's kill my throat to my dogs. Here, lady. Anyway, so I called the gastro and said, I need a freaking endoscopy. I can't stand it, man. I can't stand it burning. It's like freaking lava, and it doesn't stop. And it happens all the time, even like if I drink water. Man, I wake, it wakes me up. I got to sleep, and it's like, man, it's burning, dude. So it's like, oh, fine, uh, uh, let's go on the dust cover. So that was 
So I, I went to the hospital for the great thing in December 2001, right? 2001, December. Then 2002, oh, I went to the, I, I managed to, to go to the cardiologist on February 2002. Then I managed to see the gastro in May of 2002, and then he finally uh, scheduled the endoscopy for June 2002. God damn, man. Look how much time, all right? Okay. So anyway, hey, not looking bad. Look at this. Look at this. Protein, I need it, you know. Man, I have to force myself to eat it because I'm scared of this. See, a grown man like me, I'm scared of this garbage because I'm scared of eating it because I know it's going to kick my butt. This is the only thing that... Uh, it doesn't go ballistic on me, but it still gives me a reflex. I still burn. Anyway, so in June I have the endoscopy, okay? In June I have the endoscopy. And guess what? Nothing. They didn't find anything, all right? Nothing in my endoscopy. Uh, there were like signs of uh, reflux. So like uh, I had like uh, my esophagus was uh, inflamed and like uh, gastritis. But the guy, the, 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 the the gastro was not impressed. This is like no big deal. And I was like dying, man. I was like in full burn mode, okay? He's like, no, no big deal. It's not, it's not freaking big deal, man. So, man, he put me on more PPIs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make another video where I give you a list of all the medicines. I tried all the Prozols, all the Prozols, the Gaviscon, the, all the garbage, man. And it, nothing freaking worked. The car fade, yeah, you know. I'll give you a list in a minute, all right? Uh, actually, I'll continue this video in a minute, uh, and I'll give you the list of all the stuff I've taken. So, he put me in all this stuff, and it wasn't working, and it was making it worse, which is weird, but it's, the, the PPIs would make it worse for some reason. Um, so, I'm gonna put this over here. There we go. The PPI, can I put this? I don't even remember. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cooking nice. Okay. So, then by, I thought, do more tests. I'm gonna put this up. Do more tests, you know, we need more tests, man. I, I can't live like this, there's no way to live. Right? There's no way to live. So do more tests. So he, he put the, the barium swallow, and I did the barium swallow in September. Okay, so June one endoscopy, kept taking PPIs and all like trash. Uh, turn this one. For like, like a couple months, all right, I kept, I kept going for a couple months with the PPIs and the carafate and the Gaviscon. I took the Gaviscon, the US version and the British version, the UK version, which is uh, aniseed and it tastes foul, foul, right, foul. But still, I took it, helped a little, but maybe daisy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so by December, I did the uh, barium swallow and it didn't find anything. It was like normal. Dude, man, what's going on, right? Because I, I started like, thinking I, I must have something really bad if they cannot find it, and, uh, and the symptoms are so severe, like so severe. Like, every day I, I wouldn't sleep, and I still don't sleep, but I wouldn't sleep at night because it was so so severe, uh, like burning all the time. Man, it was a mess, you know. Right? I mean, I would I would work out because uh, that's that's mainly my profession is to train. And uh, man, I would be, I would be in class feeling like I was going to faint, like burning. I feel going to faint. I would have to go to the office and hold myself. Uh, it was interfering my, my whole life. So anyway, so I did the burn swallow. It was fine. Then I begged the guy, do another endoscopy, man. Do another endoscopy, please, please. And he's like, no, you don't need it. Like, I need the freaking endoscopy, man. I need it, all right. And not only that, do a colonoscopy, okay? I do a colonoscopy. Because what if uh, is up in the other side, right? So come on. So okay, the guy finally bent. He says, "All right, let's do the colonoscopy and the endoscopy." So December, okay. So like what a year already, right? A year. So December endoscopy and endoscopy. The results for the endoscopy: freaking uh, hiatal hernia, Barrett's, right? My stuff like freaking Barrett's, man. And I had a uh, what is the pylori. H. pylori, which in uh, in June it had been negative for pylori or candida or candida candida for the fungus. H. pylori positive. God, man, like those three things. Boom, boom, boom. 
and uh, the colonoscopy, nothing there, no polyps, no nothing, clear, man, clear, clear. So the colonoscopy was good. I hope he didn't miss it, right? But anyway, I hope. But the endoscopy goes three things at once. Damn. So, well, it started to, I, I got on the quadruple treatment for pylori, the two antibiotics, the PPI, and the pepto -bismol. Two weeks, or like 14 days. It was horrid. Um, I mean, by the ninth, sixth day, by the sixth day, it was okay, okay. And then suddenly I felt like I was getting like chemically burned inside. My mouth was on fire. My esophagus was like 10 times worse. I felt like I was going, my, my esophagus was going to rupture, right? But I, I just kept going. I just kept going. I said, okay, let's do it. Let's kill the bug. Maybe the bug is causing all this, right? So I kept going, going. I finished the thing. And I stopped the PPI because I knew the PPIs don't help me. But I took it for the course of, uh, so it's supposed to, the PPI is supposed to like um, reduce the acidity so the, the bacteria, uh, its outer, outer wall, it, it like lowers its defense. This is not defending against the acid anymore. So when it lowers the defense, it lets the antibiotic hit it. So the PPI is important just to uh, lower the defense. Same with the Pepto-Bismol. So you lower the acidity, so it lowers the defense, you kill it. So all right. So I finished the, the, the two course, uh, uh, two week course, and I felt the same, the freaking same. Now worse, because my mouth was on fire, man. And I, my mouth was on freaking fire. And I like looked in the mirror, opened my mouth, and my whole tongue was white. So now I have freaking thrush. So you see, so I had killed my bacteria, right? My, my good bacteria, the flora. So it was not defending me against thrush. So I got freaking candida or candida, candida, the freaking fungus on my tongue. And man, I don't know if it's my, my throat too. So great. Now I was put on the statin, on the, on the liquid to take that. Right? And I had to wait, what, well, like he said, wait a month so we retest for the, for the pylori, for the H. pylori, the bacteria, for the stomach, which can give you cancer too, it's a mess. All right. Um, so I took the, 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 the liquid for like, um, almost two weeks, all right? And then it just wasn't working. This is still having the, the, the tongue white. So he gave me pills, the fluconazole pills, which I felt so bad, it made, made me weak. On top of everything, right? Burning, not sleeping, it made me even weak. It's like, oh man, it was like everything, like one thing over another. So anyway, so uh, uh, my tongue looked Less white, so I guess it worked. So I, um, I finished a week and a half of fluconazole, and my tongue looks like normal before the whole day. So at least my tongue is fine. Um, they killed at least uh, the fungus. So I, um, well, like a week ago, I did a test for the H. pylori, which came negative, the blowing test on the little packet they give you, you have to blow into it, it's a breath test, negative. I have to do, I'm gonna do another one in like a month just for my own dime, just in case, because this doctor says it's negative, and he thinks it's negative forever. So uh, I'm gonna do another one just on my own dime, just in case. But anyway, so now I have the hiatal hernia, and the doc says, your hiatal hernia is too little, too small to create any, uh, any uh, symptoms. I'm like, then what is causing the symptoms, man? I don't know. I don't know. He's like, help, man. He's like, I don't know. Uh, so he's like, probably uh, is the pylori, you're gonna feel better after the pylori. I didn't, it's still burning and all that stuff. So I told the guy, listen, I made a list of all the medicines he had given me. And he said, all these don't work. All right, I have no recourse. There's no way out for me, man. All right, there's no way. Put me a surgeon. He's like, surgery is the last, the last choice the last chance, you know, the last thing to consider. And I think that, uh, you know, we can still go further with this. Like, dude, I got Barrett's. And he's like, well, it's not a big deal because you have little spots of Barrett's and uh, it's not, it has no dysplasia. So we don't need to like burn it and we're not concerned about it. I'm like, this guy is gonna kill me, man. This guy's gonna freaking kill me if I keep going with this idiot. Sorry, docs, but some of you are idiots, All right? So uh, if I keep going with this nonchalant, I don't care kind of attitude. I'm gonna die, man. You know, and my, my life sucks. My life was freaking ruined for a year and a half. Freaking ruined. And he didn't care. All right, okay. 
So I went for my general practitioner and I made a list of all these uh, uh, gastric like surgeons, right? So I looked on the internet, I, I, I saw some, like, like they give conference on YouTube. And I went for the best one that I thought. And uh, I went to my general practitioner, he's a great guy, a great doctor, and I told him, man, help me out because this other, the, the gastro sucks. And so help me out. And he gave me the referral to the, the, the gastro surgeon. And in the meantime, the, my gastroenterologist called me and says, you know what, I'm going to refer you to a gastro surgeon finally. I'm like, dude, forget it. Yeah. Okay, so I made both refer me to this surgeon. Okay, both, the gastroenterologist and my general practitioner sent me to, sent me to a freaking uh, uh, surgeon. All right, so I talked to the surgeon. I made an appointment. He like, I mean, a week, you know. <coughs> it just happened last week. Last week I talked to him. So I like coughing. So I talked to him and he's like, well, we can do, let's, I had a manometry, what, yesterday, right? The manometry was yesterday. So he said, let's do a manometry and with the manometry we can tell, man, what do you need? Or like a, if you're, um, you're uh, LES, you're is it like, is, is esophageal uh, sphincter, right? the lower is esophageal, esophageal sphincter, it's too loose or whatever and how much we need to tighten it. Uh, if you're swallowing, it makes you a candidate or not for links. And I said, man, links, no, man, links, uh, they put metal, uh, you know? Uh, what if I, I mean, there's, you know when they tell you there's no stupid questions, all right? Uh, you know, when you were little? I think they lied to us because there's some stupid questions, right? And I they, and they made some, but it mattered to me. So I, I, I said, well, you know, what if I like walk by a junkyard, walk by a junkyard, and they have this electromagnet, and it like ripped my sternum out like the movie Aliens, all right? And he's like, no, man, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and I said, what about an MRI? What about an MRI? You go to an MRI, it rips your crap out. And then he's like, no, 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 you know, this has to be after uh, uh, like 1.5 Tesla power, and it would just like demagnetize it. I was like, really? Okay, well, if you say so, right? So, uh, but I said, I think I'm going to do it from duplication, okay? That's what I'm thinking. So he's like, no, no, fine, well, let's do it from duplication. So I went home and I did my research and I said, and I, and I saw that from the application, man, you cannot burp or, or throw up correctly after and like forget about chugging like a, like a bottle of Coke or Pepsi or whatever you like. Man, any uh, fizzy drink, you're screwed, okay? You're going to be like messed up, all right? So no, and those are the pleasures of life. I mean, somebody you want to be in the beach and you're, you're little. So uh, I said, no, no. Uh, so I'm considering the links. So uh, let's see if how the manometry went yesterday. I put a video uh, already about the manometry that is freaking awful, but I did it. So let's see how the manometry goes. And according to that, man, I hope I can do the links. So, I mean, you know, if there's a better, better technology in the future, they can just pull the links out because it's not, not very invasive and it's like reversible. You know, just take the thing out and you're done. With the fund application, it's like forever and ever and ever. And even the, the nurse I spoke to, the, the one that does uh, the manometry, she, uh, she told me, yeah, I have a hernia too. I was like, really? Oh, hi, doctor. Yeah, yeah, I'm messed up. So uh, I said, have you done the surgery? She's like, no, not yet, because I have swallowing problems and not yet. So she was like, she had like kind of cold feet about it. But I'm like, no, man, I'm going to do it. And I told her, hey, so what about the fundoplication or the links? And she's like, no, I will do the links. Because uh, I've heard about the front obligation. Sometimes you have to take they, they, they take it down or it unravels and unwraps. I mean, you know, I don't know how, how she's uh, how accurate she is. But uh, the link sounds good. I mean, it's, and it sounds like it will last a long time. And I like that you can just take it out, right? And uh, I mean, and what are the, and, you know, I got these stupid ideas, right? What if, like, you know, bear, bear me, right? What if, like, for example, aliens come down? <laughs> All right, and they, and they have these magnets, all right, and they just rip it out. But no, what are, the, the chances of some something weird like that happen, of like an electromagnet falling from the sky, I have higher chance of getting uh, cancer from birds, I think, than uh, you know some weird happening like that. I just walk down the street and they have the, the biggest electromagnet in the world and just tears it out. I don't think so, right? So uh, I think I'm gonna shoot for the links. And let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to keep you guys updated because I know it's hard and it's hard and you feel alone because you see everyone that is healthy 
uh, for example, man, you're watching TV and you just don't focus on the on the TV or on the, on the show. You look at the actor and say, I bet that guy does enough reflex. You know, I bet that guy is not burning right now. You know, I bet that guy or that girl is not suffering like I am. So it ruins everything. It ruins your job. It ruins your daily life. That's all you can think of, all right? That's all you can talk about. So, so I'm sometimes I'm like just like, like uh, apologizing to people because I'm like, man, I'm sorry I'm talking about this garbage again, you know? But it's constantly there, 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 there. Reminding you, like like annoying freaking wolf, man, like chewing at you and barfing the lava out. <laughs> and it's always there and that's all you can think about. Everything, it revolves against, uh, uh, around that. Your life is not yours anymore. It's the GERD, it's the burning. Is your suffering, and it affects everybody because you become a freaking drag. Man. You cannot talk about anything that is not really garbage. People are like, "Hey, how are you doing?" I'm like, oh shit, man, I got a call from you. You know, I feel, oh man, it's as good as it gets. You know, you start giving those quotes, as good as it gets. No, no, no. no. So uh, get it fixed if you can. Get it fixed if your if your gastro doesn't work with you. Go to your primary practitioner. And tell them to refer you to a gastro surgeon, to a surgeon, and work through that. Right? Because sometimes gastro, uh, gastroenterologists just want to put you like PPIs. I mean, this guy, you know, the first time I did the endoscopy, I was on the, uh, in, in June uh, of last year, I was on, the, on the, the bed, and he like comes in to like talk to me before the procedure. And I, I asked the guy, you know, what about the PPIs? Do they have side effects? I knew they did because I had looked it up. All right, I know they could cause dementia, they could cause cancer, polyps, and all the garbage in the long run. And he's like, side effects? No, no side effects, man, I'm totally safe. I was like, so you want me on these for life? He's like, yeah, 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 you have to take it for life, like forever. I was like, oh no, and then I had to go under for him to do the gospel. I was like, dude, well, who am I under here, man, you know? So yeah, whatever, all right? So sometimes your gastro is not that great. So go for the gastro surgeon. Just go with your primary care practitioner and like push the issue, push the issue, get the freaking surgery. Because there's no way to live. This is no way to live. So anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoy that. And remember, you're not alone. We're all in this together and we're gonna make it. We're all gonna make it. We're all gonna make it. So uh, just stick with it and just keep in touch. All right, this is it. This one, these two are for later. So tonight, right here. So I'm going to, I mean, these girls are being very, this is Lala. This is Sassy. Lady, where's Lady? Lady. That's Lady. And Chuna, where's Chuna? Chuna, come here. Hey, Lala. Chuna. Oh, that's Chuna. All right. They've been waiting patiently. So I'm going to share me. First lady, lady crown. Hey, no, come on. Ready? All right, All right now, and sassy, sassy. Yes, she is sassy. Okay, you're full. There you go, there you go. Now, chuna. No, it's sassy. There you go. All right, there you go. And now, la la. This will be way patient, eh? Fatty. I'm not fatty. There you go. There you go, pretty boy. Sassy is fatty. She tries to steal from everybody. Well, okay, girls. That was good for tonight. Eat your cookies. See you next time, guys.